Here it is, order reissuing. All right, June 1st, June 12th was the next court hearing. All right. <laughs> now, uh, uh, it could have been a permanent uh, court hearing, permanent protection order. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you had actually served me, you didn't have to reissue it two times. If you have proof of service uh, after re reissuing the temporary protection order, it could have been the permanent protection order court hearing. Yes. As soon as you had scheduled it, 50 days later, it happened to be in violation of the law. <laughs> I'm actually going to sue you for that. Because you didn't realize that you can only issue a temporary protection order for 14 days. <laughs> now, in my own mind, I thought about it. Well, how does the court know if it's going to be a, an, a permanent uh, protection order court hearing? Uh, 14 days later, or a, another reissuing of the temporary protection order court hearing 14 days later. How do you, as a court, know what you're going to do when the next date of the court hearing is? <laughs> Well, if you have proof of notice, okay, and I've never, I've never motioned the court for a protection order, but if I had proof of notice that the respondent had received notice within the five judicial days before the court hearing, then I could have issued a protection order. Now, how the fuck do you know what you're going to do at the next court hearing? You know, because of the proof of you having served the respondent five judicial days before the court hearing. <laughs> now, I'll give you an example. <laughs> Somebody thought you always had to have two temporary protection order court hearings and then one permanent protection order. Let's say, okay, <laughs> there's a renewal of the protection order, shares return of service, re order reissuing temporary protection order, right. <laughs> and we found out this uh, shares return of service was probably that publication that you didn't put on the, the court's chronological superior court case history. Yes. Order reissuing. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say the shares return of service was personal notice that I had received at least five judicial days prior to the court hearing, notice of the court hearing. <clears throat> you would not have had a temporary protection order issued at that time. It would have been a permanent protection order. Now, did you think, okay, if we walked through all of these that you've done, <laughs> I'll give you an example. Let's start back in 2011. Yes, yes, yes. Back in 2011, Heidi got to Clown County approximately three or four days before that because she abducted my sons on July 2nd. <laughs> she motioned the court for a temporary order for protection ex parte <laughs> because she said that I had uh, committed domestic violence and child abuse. Right. Some confidential reports in the sealed envelope more than likely about arresting or having arrested me on Guam. Yeah. Yeah. Now, they set a court hearing uh, 14 days later. You did it good that time, right? But there was a requirement having to give the respondent notice of the court hearings. Yes, it's something you have to do with every court hearing. But you thought you could just say the guy's crazy and not have to enforce his rights. Pooh. Now, as soon as she walked in and said, well, Paul's on Guam. He was in jail for 10 days, and he's not going to be able to travel to Washington State for what looks like a year. Pooch. You should have immediately said, we cannot reissue the temporary protection order unless the respondent is given notice and opportunity to be heard. But you didn't. <clears throat> Now, let's say I had been a resident of Washington State, and we both had lived here in Clallam County for the previous 50 fucking years. She walks in and says, oh, my gosh, she committed domestic violence. The guy's crazy. Pooch. You issue that ex parte order right then. Pow. And then with 14 days, you're obligated to give notice and opportunity to the respondent. Now, if you have proof that the respondent did receive notice of the court hearing, as the law requires, you can say that the next court hearing, ooch, instead of reissuing the temporary protection order, yes, can be a permanent order for protection. That's how you fucking know. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I really grappled with this whole concept. How do I know what's going to happen at the next court hearing 14 days after you issue the ex parte order for protection? <laughs> you know what decides it? Oh, that the respondent received notice uh -huh, and the opportunity to be heard at least five judicial days prior to the court hearing. <laughs> Was it necessary to have another temporary protection order court hearing? No. <laughs> he's in jail on Guam and he's not going to be able to travel to Washington State. <laughs> now, I would say, yes, mm -hmm, that this concept that we have to have two temporary protection order court hearings before we can issue a permanent protection order is a wrong interpretation of exactly what the fucking law says. <laughs> now, I'm going to sue you for this one, ooch, <laughs> because you should not have reissued the ex parte emergency domestic violence protection order when you were informed that the respondent <laughs> could not travel to Washington State and would not be able to appear in court. <laughs> Now there's a declaration. Oh my gosh, Paul just got out of jail approximately one day before his 41st birthday on July 12th of 2011. <laughs> and there's no way he's going to get from Guam to Washington State. He's not going to swim the Pacific. That's right. But no, what you do is you do order reissuing, order reissuing, permanent protection order. Oh, then renewal of protection order, motion hearing, order issuing temporary protection order. Yes, yes, yes. Now, when you petitioned oops, the court commissioner oh, for the renewal of the order of the protection order on May 31st of 2012, and there was no attempt of service uh -huh, before June 15th when he reissued the temporary protection order by minute order, you should just use a fucking minute order to issue a permanent protection order, you stupid motherfucker. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.